working in progress. All right, it is time for Council Club once again. It is December 16th. So um, as we usually do, we go over what happened at this past Tuesday's city council meeting and then look forward to next Tuesday and what is in that agenda. So um, we'll kind of, we will spend a lot of time on redistricting, redistricting again, because that was um, kind of the bulk of the meeting and there have been some exciting changes, which we think is due to public participation. So thanks to everybody who emailed or spoke up. Um, because there are some amendments come to the map. So we'll get to that in a second, but um, just to kind of do a brief recap, um, there was some more TIF money handed out and um, the TIF report is coming for um, kind of a recap of all the TIF dollars and applications and everything that went out in 2021. That will be available, I think they said March or April. So that'll be something that'll be boring and exciting to jump into hopefully when that comes through in a couple months. Can't believe we're already at the end of 2021. Um, monopoles, you know, that's something that we were following and we got so jazzed about the redistricting and the re-precincting and all that stuff that we kind of breezed through too quickly last, 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 last time's agenda. Well, it also, it's not, uh, huh. the agenda item says, you know, changes to municipal code and a bunch of dashes and numbers. It doesn't say anywhere monopole, uh, wireless, um, there's a bunch of keywords that people have been searching for. It didn't come up. And so when they started talking about monopoles and specifically 55th and Poppleton and Dundee Bank, um, we were completely caught off guard. Yeah, We had no idea. And so we missed the opportunity for public testimony. Yeah. Um, but then do you know, Sarah, if so, this is it's a three week process. They did first reading on December 7th, second reading and public hearing was this past Tuesday, and then they'll vote. Uh, December 21st, this next following Tuesday. Can we email our council member between this period, but after public testimony and when they vote? And yeah, I mean, I think you can email them whenever. I mean, I'm not sure, you know, they're not still taking public testimony, but I never think it hurts to share your thoughts with them. So if you do have strong feelings about it before the vote, I would say email your city councilor. Um, and that is, um, and we're kind of jumping around, but since it's it was on last week and this coming week, it's item number 22 of the consent agenda, which will be voted on with a bunch of other stuff um, this coming week. So if you have feelings about, you know, sidewalks being obstructed by Verizon poles, this would be the time. So I just talked to a neighbor that's um, very involved in these monopoles, been doing a bunch of research on it. And basically the new ordinance is, it's gonna require I'm just going to use Verizon. It can be any wireless company, but it's going to require Verizon to notify the homeowner or the whoever ha owns the right of way or the adjacent right of way, uh, basically a two week notice. So two weeks prior to them digging a hole in your in your huh, not your yard, but the right of way um, <laughs> next to your yard. Um, but it still is a little bit unclear. There is an electrical permit. And then there's also a excavation permit. And so uh, the way I understand it, there's sort of some contradictions and timelines unclear, but hopefully moving forward, I, you'll get two weeks notification that, hey, in two weeks, we're gonna put a pole in your yard. And then at that point, that's when you go to, you can try to reach out to your council member or to Verizon to say, hey, is there any way you could put this pole? Some of us already have existing poles in our right of way, um, or also the aesthetics of the pole. So they're supposed to match nearby poles. Like if, if the pole in your, in your driveway is galvanized, then the pole that should be installed should also be galvanized. For those of you that are familiar with the pole in Dundee, it's a white pole. And then all the other poles in the area are, I think either galvanized or brown. And so they really haven't been doing a good job of matching not only historic districts, but then also the, the poll that was at 55th and Poppleton was an ADA violation. And there already are existing ordinances on ADA that have nothing to do with <laughs> monopoles or anything. You can't mess with sidewalks. And so the city needs to get better about enfor enforcement of already existing ordinances. They um, they really dropped the ball on 55th and Poppleton. I know that Danny Begley said that his hands are tied. 
I remember he also said that Verizon can put the pole in the middle of the street if they wanted to. So I kind of feel like everyone's doing the not it game. Um, but at least now you're going to have two weeks, <laughs> two week notification. Um, and then hopefully if, if, if and when that comes, um, it's going to be interesting to see how the conversation is not mandated. I feel like with liquor, you know, whenever there's a liquor, um, someone who applies for a, um, a liquor application, it's the same kind of process. They have to notify everyone within 500 feet. And then there's a then there's a whole conversation at city council. There is not going to be a conversation anywhere. Or that conversation is not in the ordinance. It's just sort of the bare minimum. We're, I think it's a little bit of wishful thinking. Um, but also I think it would be the if if you do get a letter in the mail or a door hanger saying they're gonna give you a poll, I think you reach out to your network, reach out to the media, and make a big stink about it. Is the, is gonna be your best bet. Um but yeah, so that's uh, item number 22. And you can email your council member. And it was, so man, Sarah and I felt really bad that we missed it last week and then it snuck up on us. But Mode Shift specifically asked for a heads up. Yeah, because obviously we were following it too and like wanted to know what the language is going to look like. Um, our concern was like, yes, of course, communication with folks is always good, but it really doesn't have much to do with this ordinance. We're just like shocked that they are so ignorant of ADA and American Disabilities Act. So that's not just like a suggestion, it's a law. And so that is particularly upsetting that they can just ignore it and there's no repercussions to this giant communications company who does whatever they want. But um, anything else on that? I think we should keep rolling. I, no, and I guess my, I think we should skip to, so <laughs> last week's at the, that's a pretty long meeting last a week. four, four hour, hour meeting, yeah. And we almost left after, after redistricting, which was the second to last, I was like, I'm ready to go home. And Sarah's like, no, let's stick around for this uh, this parking on sidewalks thing. Yeah. And sure, and the cool thing was, Danny Begley called you, called Sarah Johnson from the audience to come and I, I think he said, what's Mode Shift's perspective on yeah. parking on sidewalks? So some people, you may have seen in Dundee, there'll be these little permits. You're not parking on the sidewalk, you're parking on the right-of-way again. You're parking on the little piece of cement between the sidewalk and the street, but they'll have little permitted sections, leases, leases, leased spots. Yeah. And so this one specifically um, that was talked about, I think I, I got denied last week. Well, they did a layover on the whole situation, but yeah, so automatic printing on coming at about 17th street already has a parking lot attached to their property and they were leasing spaces on the sidewalk basically. Uh, and so they were appealing it, of course. Yes, their business has been there since 1940 and a whole rigmarole. But I thought it was hilarious that I'm grateful that Begley called me up because there wasn't public hearing. It was just the um, the people appealing this lease termination. Um, but Begley said, you know, and actually even Melton was like, you know, we've got mode shift out there talking about wanting bikeable, walkable spaces. And so I don't know if we should be putting cars on sidewalks. And I was like, yes, that is correct. Melton, rarely I agree with her, but that was one of them. So uh, Begley called me down and I said, yeah, um, definitely, definitely excited to hear that you're taking sidewalks seriously because let's put the people where the people go and the cars where the cars go and you already have a parking lot. So um, anyway, they, uh, are going to deny the application or they're gonna terminate their lease, but not for 60 days. So it wasn't like a, it's done tomorrow. The kind of happy medium was, you've got two months to tell your customers and delivery drivers and whatever to park somewhere else. So they were upset. They confronted me after the meeting and were like, you don't understand this isn't black and white. And I was like, I understand what sidewalks are for and it's not cars. So it is what it is. Um, but yeah, Melton and Harding and Begley, kind of all of them, because I always sit in the back um, row. We, we always sit kind of in the same spot and they're all kind of looking. So grateful that uh, they know that Mode Shift is keeping an eye on things and cares about it. And um, I'm just always happy when I hear Mode Shift come out of any other mouths because it means that they know that we're keeping an eye, which we are. So that was good. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting was the conversation about the human rights and relations and then the civil rights hearing board. Uh, the big issue to me that I did not realize was the civil rights hearing board has actually been defunct for over 20 years. 20 years we haven't had a civil rights hearing board, which is terrible because a lot of the stuff that those that board would hear is like discrimination with housing and that sort of thing. And it turns out that HUD, HUD, um, 
is basically the reason that we are revisiting this because we have just kind of been using the law department to deal with the complaints, but um, that's not really correct. And HUD said, hey, if you don't get this figured out quickly, there's gonna be a problem. So um, they are trying to use the Human Rights and Relations Board to act as the Civil Rights Hearing Board, just three of them. It used to be a separate 11 person board. Um, the council was saying they couldn't find anybody who wanted to serve on these boards. But my thinking is, who have you been asking? How have you been trying? It's really strange to me that for 20 years you couldn't find anyone. Um, but then Preston Love Jr. stood up and said, you know, actually it's because the people that were on that board weren't being taken seriously and their ideas weren't being heard or anything was not really being done with it. So um, anyway, we'll see what happens with that, but it sounds like they are just going to use three members from the HRR board to act as the civil rights hearing board. But I guess the good news is at least it's coming back. So I think that is all from last week. Does anybody else have anything else they want to share from last week? All right, good then. We um, she was having a she was having a hard time getting in the meeting. Is there an alternate link, or how did we do it last time? Nope, I had to email it to her, which I can do again. I, um, yeah. Is she on any of the? Okay, well, I mean, okay, hold please. I'm going to figure out how to invite Cheryl. Sorry, y'all. Um, I guess the other thing that we could. Oh yeah, there was there was just a lot of really good stuff that came from there the hearing is. of redistricting. Okay, great, cool. Then I can ignore this. Admit, yes. Okay, so we will um, keep moving here. I guess the um, the majority of the conversation was redistricting, and I'll just let you say whatever you want to say about all that. But we did have gratefully some good testimony. Um, Ernie Chambers was there. Um, Cheryl Weston was there, Scott was there, um, Preston, Love. Preston Love Jr. Like there was just a bunch of good testimony. Um, I wrote to the entire council, only Don Rowe responded to me. Um, but anyway, it was one of those cases where I feel like public input did make a difference because now they are amending the maps. And we have seen the amendment uh, when they released the agenda today, it did have an amendment to the maps. So I thought that was good. Um, you're my- Yeah, I agree with the part of my, I, I usually write my testimony out ahead of time. And part of it, I was getting ready to say, like, this is a charade. You've, you've waited to the last minute. Um, but thankfully, the city, uh, Jim Dowding, um, he got up and said that, that amendments could be made. And so I think everyone kind of was like, oh, wait a second. This isn't too late. Um, but yeah, I was, I, have you ever heard or seen Ernie Chambers at city council before? I don't know if Cheryl's ever, I feel like she might've, that was the first time I no. ever, that was his first he, time. He does not attend the city council meeting. In fact, he didn't even know what the process when I told him that they have a proponents and opponents. Right. And um, when he came and we had had conversations before and um, I immediately was like, you, you know, cause first he said he didn't know for sure. And then he said he might not say anything, but I called him and, and uh, Preston called him and someone else called him and he was like, he'll be there. He called me back and said, I'll be there at 2.30. Awesome. And he spoke um, for close to 20 minutes? Yes. And they did not interrupt him, did they? That's <laughs> right. That's right. I was like, I did. There was no three minute limit. Well, <laughs> there was ever, none. Ever since and then, um, over, yeah, he's gotten rid of the yeah, three minute rule. He was. It was very good. And it, it was... Uh, right on target because I knew he was coming. I had cut, I'm kind of like you, Scott, I had cut some of my conversation short because I wanted it more to um, to reflect from what he was going to say versus what I might have my little two cents worth. Um, but um, it was very ironic. In fact, uh, Sarah's dang, I wish you would have bet me. Cause I said, how much you gonna bet that this is gonna get amended? Yep. And uh, it was my conversation that I had uh, with uh, Milton, I'm sorry, with Jim, when mm -hmm. I talked to him. Um, and I said, well, how, there's got to be a way, this, this can't just have to, this, how does this have to go through? And that's when I was made aware of the amendment, because I didn't know it either. So that was like, okay, there's going to be an amendment. We're going to get this. <laughs> yeah. Cheryl, you, you, had spoke, you had spoken to Jim Dowding ahead of the meeting? Yes. That's excellent. 
No, I yes. think like a total win for council club and for public and, yes. for, district, and for district too. Um, so I don't know if right. I put the new map on my Twitter. They're basically um, yeah, keeping uh, the North downtown area that includes TD Ameritrade, the Quest Center, mm -hmm. CHI, um, the Joslin Art Museum, Gallup, Central High School. So yeah, they're keeping this, I have, we're sharing our screen now. Um, so the bright pink area, which was which was always in District Two, is staying mm -hmm. in District Two. Um, it's funny the little there's a little bit of the black uh, south of the black line. I believe that's City Hall, right? Farnham and Thirteenth. Thirteenth. Well, sit more like Seventeenth, Eighteenth. So yeah, City Hall is now in District Two, right? Which right. wasn't before, but not the jail. Yeah, yeah that they. Um, I'm trying to see. Okay, now I can see it. Part of that downtown was had been in District Two. Right. Um, oh, so north they, of the black line was was the yeah. old boundary, the old boundary. So mm -hmm. black. Line. Yep. So and, they put it all in there. Um, I didn't really see until you go over to the um, riverfront. That was moved. Okay. Riverfront development there. Um, oh, it goes down below. Interesting. Yeah, so they drew I, they drew the the new precinct line is uh -huh. why they kind of get that part that 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 used to not be in or that used to be in District Three, which I would say is south of Dodge um, to Harney. So that three mm -hmm. or four block that's sort of new. Um, but they can't redraw the precinct lines have already been drawn and they can't really mess with that. Um, no. And then, uh, and then Gifford Park, which was always, yeah, Gifford Park, which was always, not always, but was in District 3 before, remains in District 3. So they swapped those two. That's part of the amendment. Is um, Yes, because Gifford Park um, was uh, Bagley's area. And that's back, I think, where he grew up at, or his home, original home was, is in that area right there. So, but the main thing was getting all that other back into there and, um, which you should have never been taken out in the first place, but yeah. anyway, no, it's I, a win. Yeah, and I think <gasps> Preston Love and, and, and Ernie Chambers and you, and mm -hmm. Cheryl Wesson as well, you, you guys kept bringing up how these are important assets and Correct. revenue generating mm -hmm. in the district in district two and to take that away from district two i think it caught a lot of i think i don't even well i, I definitely know that uh, council member johnson was aware but i think you know amy melton was said she'll vote for it if you know if, if that's something they want to do so um and i think that was another interesting thing that was talked about a little bit is that you know melton did kind of put juanita you know on the spot saying uh this was there were countless opportunities for amendments leading up to this point. Uh, yes. And there weren't any brought up by Councillor Johnson. So I guess that was um, kind of just- an She did get the little dig in, yeah. but I didn't really object to it because I felt it was needed. I was sitting next to you and that's how I heard it. So I was appreciative of knowing, because like, I didn't think about that either, you know, like- Yes. Of course this I was- I felt like that was needed. Yeah, totally. And um, I did express that to one is that you cannot and if you can I explained to her also if you read between some of the lines that Ernie spoke yeah he was telling you you can be new yeah but that doesn't eliminate what you should do right and that even though he was new he was black he was the only one he didn't let that stop him from doing the right thing at the right time and so um he was you know, I think he was trying to help educate, but I had also talked to Melton. That's the reason why Downing and, and uh, Cruz and them were there because mm -hmm. I had talked to them too. Well, and I emailed them saying, we better see Brian Cruz and the people who drew the maps there as yeah. well. So yeah, I and think- And so I told her that if, um, when we talked and she talks forever anyway, but she did call me back and it was kind of ironic too because um, Festerson called me back on later that afternoon on Tuesday and I called them on Thursday, Friday. So that's the reason why I got my little dig in. I didn't say it real loud, but um, thank you Melton for having this. And uh, I had contacted other city council members, but they didn't return. 
the yeah. calls. I got no response from anybody except for Don Rowe. Yeah. See, and that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's so messed up. That's why I ran because Pete stopped responding to me. I'm like, all right, I'll get you to pay attention. But and what I mean, so earlier uh, on Tuesday, I actually spoke for the first time at the Douglas County Commissioner's Board meeting mm -hmm. and, Brian, and Brian Cruz wasn't there. They had someone no. from Douglas County GIS. And I'm like, wait a second. Douglas County Election Commissioner is not at the Douglas County redistricting hearing, but is no. at the city council. So bravo to you and Sarah for getting them to getting Brian Cruz to show up because man, I felt like he was not ready for what we had, what we had for him. No, he wasn't. And yeah, thank Cheryl, you guys too, you because you know, you guys, you helped me a lot. And uh, uh, Scott, when you provided the maps and things and, and, you know, sharing that. So it, this is just a perfect example of what can happen when a community starts to speak up when the people yes. start to speak up and demand that's yes. and that's why you're what you're doing is so important having this going over the agenda is so important and not only this particular but other things that have come up and and they're still coming up and particularly like the land bank thing that's not going over well so yeah. um, thank you to all of you <laughs> all of you for showing up it's a win yeah it's definitely a lot more fun when there's there's more of us but yeah we did feel um that we were kind of yeah excited to at least have felt like the group effort made a little bit of a difference um and i do want to just like speaking of high fives this fucking guy they didn't even have maps like the election yeah. commission didn't have maps but and scott's like uh, I have all these freaking maps and Harding at one point was like, I know Scott Blake likes to play with maps. And it's like, yeah, he's actually doing all of your jobs for you. Ding dong. Mm -hmm. He does like to play with maps, which you all should be doing as your jobs, but okay. Yes. Let him do it for you. And I, I actually discovered a minor, ugh, a minor, I wouldn't call it an error, but a discrepancy. So we have precincts and then we have districts and districts are not allowed to split a precinct. I found mm -hmm. a precinct at 180th and Maple, way out west, almost to basically Elkhorn, and they're splitting a precinct. And so I, mess yes. I messaged my new friend at GIS, and he said that Omaha City Council got permission from Douglas County Election Commissioner to, yes. to split a precinct. So half the precinct is in Harding's district, other half is mm -hmm. in, and I'm just like, who, where's their polling place going to be? Right. Like, talk about confusion yeah. and just like, but I, so yeah, um, that was a rare one. And Chris had told me about that when I talked to him. So that was one that was kind of like an exception and that yeah. doesn't happen very often. And it was due to some of the antics annexing, but also that particular one is in the County where they have been, um, having quite a bit of discussion and back and forth feuds on, I think it's water rights or something like that. And that also came up in the Sierra Club meeting that I attend. So it that was the only one that that he said it has happened in years. And then I think Cheryl, you weren't on this um, when we first started this call. Um, mm -hmm. we talked about um, the Omaha Housing Authority. Did you by chance? Yeah, I was there this morning. Were you mm -hmm. that? Were you at that meeting as well? Yes. I saw, I saw <laughs> you were on. I saw you on KTV News. Um, and just, oh, I was. I, I could. I could see your, I could see just your hair. Your curls. Yeah, just your curls. <laughs> they didn't have, didn't have any interviews with you, but also Destiny Stark, who's on the call today or right now, um, both uh -huh. of them were, were in the background. Um, they mainly yes. focused on the people that were talking and that had gotten pink slips for Christmas. Um, I thought um, if Destiny was there, I and I uh, was going to try to call the gentleman who um, I just thought that was really right to the point when he made the comment that October 10th, I get a pink slip and two days later I get in the mail this award. So right. he turned oh. it back. He gave the award back. That's oh, right. hell yeah. Yeah, I he like gives that it. Like, Here you go. <laughs> oh, what a. And I'm kind of, I'm waiting to see because Ernie spoke eloquently as oh. usual at that. Um, and that was on KETV, I think it was, or KMTV. I get those K's mixed up. Yeah. But he, he was on there. And um, of course, and uh, McKinney, mm -hmm. who said that anything he can do in his power, he's going to try to see that this is rescind. So I'm hoping that they will contact HUD. Mm -hmm. um, 
I have a friend who used to be over HUD. So um, I left a message for him today um, to see, because this is something that has been going on since um, whatever her name is, poor, whatever, um, has taken the CEO position. And um, one of the things, because I'm working with the gentleman, the OHA Heavy Hitters Youth Program, football program, 33 years that had been in, and she decided not to fund it this year Ugh. at the very last minute. And 25 black and brown employees have been uh, terminated or jobs have been eliminated. Um, and the one lady that I personally know, hers was eliminated, but yet and still this lady's friend was assigned that job um, I think basically like, I'll just say it may have been a few more days, but basically on Monday, she told this lady, I know, um, you've been doing it for 20, 20 some years, but that job has been eliminated. And practically on Wednesday, the job was reposted and filled oh. with her friend. Oh, so many hijinks, just yes, terrible. So, um, I noticed uh, Cindy Maxwell Osdick uh, asked a question mm -hmm. about um, in the chat. She asked about uh, how does the that, the little precinct. I don't think it affects a legislative district four. Um, I believe that the legislative re precincting did not get the same um, exception to split that precinct. God, now I have to go back and look. Cindy Maxwell Osdick, I will look into that. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. Thank you so much, Scott. I was following along on Twitter and I was very confused with trying to understand between precincts and polling place and which, which is first and what is overlaid. Which comes first? I, I still don't understand. Re-precincting just happened and they said they're going to come up with polling places. In yes. But he said right. that no polling places would be changing. Right, which was how, a how, statement when he has, I, I know, we heard that too. It's like, how are you, you just told us that it isn't done yet, but also you're telling us that everything's fine. So I don't know, we'll, well, we'll be following And that. one of the things I'm working on right now is, so Douglas County, when they re-precincted, they said in their press release that, um, that Douglas County population increased. And so what are they gonna do? They're gonna decrease the amount of polling places. Because why? We don't want people to be waiting in line for four to five hours to vote. So what, how do you do that? You make less polling places. Like, I, it doesn't make any sense. Right. But so specifically, I just, I was spending way too much time today counting precincts. And um, Douglas County, uh, we lost nine precincts in Douglas County. Nine. In Omaha, nine. In Omaha we lost 14. What? I know, it doesn't make, so I believe Doug, the, uh, there's the county gained some that Omaha the lost. part yeah the part that it's in Douglas County that is not Omaha it's called district eight not just so we have seven city council districts they call the rest of it district eight I believe district eight gained five precincts but Omaha if I'm if, again this is me counting precincts one by one there's 190 something of them um I counted it twice and Omaha is losing 14. thankfully it's not all in district two. I was expecting district two to be just completely decimated and be like, they don't need a vote in there. They've got such, um, it's pretty evenly spread. Amy Millen, I think is losing five district, I'm sorry, five precincts. Um, and it's all under the guise of making it uh, easier to vote or making it, it's like, how, that doesn't make any sense. I actually know someone in, uh, in district three that's in a tiny little district that's actually a, a volunteer poll worker and she said that it's such a small precinct that there would be hours go, would go by and no one would come in to vote in person and so that kind of I understand making that precinct bigger and getting more people to that one polling place so that it's not uh, I don't even know under under underutilized yeah. but to say that we're going to <laughs> we're going to decrease the time you have to wait in line by decreasing the amount of polling places is just absurd. Um, but then also the, the, more, the most frustrating part about all this precinct talk is precincting never gets, never has its day in court, never gets, never has a public hearing. 
we you know redistricting we had you know statewide redistricting hearings for let for the legislator we had little ones at city council which turned out to be okay but precincting and re-precincting it's it's basically all up to brian cruz the douglas county election commission and appointed he, by ricketts we'll who's, who's appointed by that. ricketts <laughs> and used to be um used to work at a mortuary so i i don't know <laughs> I don't know, I, I almost brought this up, but he might have a degree in like election gerrymandering or whatever, but um, his last job was at Brand Mortuary. Um, well, I, so. I have worked as an observer at a couple of different polling places over the past few years, and a couple of them have more than one precinct. Yep. Okay, so that does work, but I just couldn't understand when he said we wouldn't lose that no polling places would change. And you're telling me that we're losing polling places. So right there, it's changing. So there's gonna be, there's gonna be voters that are gonna be confused. It seems like it always happens. Yeah. And well, they're gonna get I that hope... postcard. They're gonna get that postcard. Which everyone ignores. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except yeah. me, I'm the one there that saved it. No, so that's what I'm talking to Dan Esch right now about what can, either the election commissioner, I think it's also up to the public to say, hey, be warned that there were major, not small, yeah. major changes to precincts in Omaha and that everyone needs to double check where your polling place is and don't wait until election day if you're gonna be voting in person. Make sure, so I feel like there needs to, not just the yellow postcard, there needs to be from, from everyone that's elected elected officials and anyone that works this city. And anyone who cares, yeah. spread the word to be yeah. on the lookout. Like, yeah. An actual education effort, yes. you know, a specific concerted effort yep. to educate people. Thank you guys so much. I I really was confused the other day. I'm still a little confused. But still yeah, confused. Join us. Yeah. We just talk about it literally all day every day because we're really cool. Uh, but no, be confused together. That's kind of what it's all about. So no, thank you everyone for um yeah, paying attention and spreading the word because it, it seems like some weird shit especially when i think the most important well all of it's obviously important but what was the most uh the thing i'm most skeptical about is when they're like just small changes it's like no over half of the city is going to have changed lines so that's not a small change more than half is not small anyway um okay anything else about that i don't know if i heard mark brennan chime in for a second but he might be on mute still not sure if you have anything to say mr brennan We'll come back to you in a bit. I know he's got a bunch of kids. Oh, geez. Well, yeah, I'll let him um, talk about it. What? Oh, the only chamber Okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay, I guess we'll just keep going. And then, I mean, we can, of course, come back to whatever we want because we make the rules. But we're going to talk about the agenda, just kind of blasting through some stuff. Um, if anybody cares about Millwork Commons, there's another phase of that going on. Public hearing and votes happening. Um, those are items 10 through 13. Um, so now we're looking at this week's agenda yes. that just came out at four o'clock, which will be happening on the 21st next yes. Tuesday, um, which is the last city council meeting of the year. They are not having a meeting on the 28th. So the 21st is the last one of 2021. Um, so number 14 is um, approving some, it's more of the holy name development at 18th and Ohio, which is um, 13 uh, affordable townhouses, again, 18th and Ohio. Um, that's that east side bungalows thing public hearing there elkhorn is creating a bid business improvement district that's number 17 so if you're out in elkhorn and you care about that that's happening um 18 i pegged just that's liquor license stuff um, because it's another liquor license in blackstone and so i know some mode shift folks are kind of paying attention as of you know a lot of us probably are um about what's going on with dead pedestrians in Blackstone and drinking and driving. And so I was just thinking if anybody has any interest in bringing up why don't we worry more about pedestrian improvements when we just continue to pack more and more liquor licenses into a dense small district. Um, so if anyone wants to say anything about that, your opportunity would be item 18. Um, 22 is that monopole again, we talked about that and it's worded weird like private use of public right of way um, so there's 22, 34 through 71, uh, that's consent agenda resolutions. So if anybody wants to talk about that, now is going to be your opportunity this coming Tuesday. I was excited to see um, 250 grand for 100 new electric 
bikes for the Heartland B cycle team. That is uh, a good thing, I think. And then going back to last week's meeting, um, so Don Rowe went on a bike ride, what on an e-bike ride with a B cycle, and Sarah came along, and um, and Don Rowe talked about how someone was parked in the bike lane, the one protected bike lane we have in Omaha, and there was a delivery driver right there. And Don Rowe was like flabbergasted. He's like, um, how can how can people park in a bike lane? Uh, it was, All it was day super, long, Don. And that's yeah. what I told him. I was like, I'm so happy that you're witnessing it and like having this outrage, but like it happens all the time. Yeah. So um, that was good that he, you know, brought that up. Um, so it's just really cool when you like see them having reactions to things that they experienced from a perspective that they wouldn't normally have. So uh, good on you, Don Rowe, for riding bikes. But so that's happening. That's good news. Um, Eric, yeah. Can I interrupt just one quick on that um, item 70? The Omaha Land Bank. Oh yeah, we're we're moving down the list, but yeah, hop in. We might as well go for it. Because I thought you said that um, the consent, which it is. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so we notice how how they put that in the consent items, which means if you they don't have to go through one by one. Um, yep. And I have put it on the record that um, that should be moved to an item and removed from the consent agenda, and yep. hopefully that will get done because um, it's already started an uproar. And Scott, I, I did send to you the bio. Oh, yeah. And if you notice on the oath, notice that date. I did not look at that. So I looked at the attachment, notice that it's Chris Rogers' wife. Chris Rogers' wife, the date on her notarized oath, April 20th. Huh. So. April 20th, this supports what we have been saying is they did not expect for Juanita to win. Huh. Therefore, they would have moved when Teresa Hunter left, Tiffany was to take over because she was still in district two, but she had moved right. by the time of the elections. Therefore, they would have moved her into that spot and Tiffany in two but there was nothing done on it. And I've gotten the information that another lady submitted her app on September the 9th, 2021, who has housing development background. Okay, thank you, because that's what I noticed in that application. And we're gonna talk about, there's there's um, a couple different appointments happening that we're gonna to get to on all of these. Oh, questions. okay. No, I, mean, I just noticed that that we, when you said consent, I didn't want to let yeah. that go. I want yeah. this group to know because you absolutely. guys speak up. <laughs> absolutely. No, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. And that's we're yeah, we're um, well, we might as well just jump in more to that because the, the things that I noticed on that were not the date. That's great. But what I noticed is that like, why are anytime we have mayoral appointments, it's like Stothard only thinks there's like five black people in the city that are capable of doing anything on her boards. And they're, it's also incestuous. So of course this is Chris Rogers' wife. I don't know this person, maybe she's great. But to me, um, already some good points made by Cheryl. And also why does it have to be someone with no background? She yeah. has, yeah, she has like a um, some oncology. I mean, she's a, probably a brilliant person, but I don't she see is. about housing in her background. So. And so some quick history. Oh, except for that she's already part of the, um, let me pull this up here. Empowerment Network, and if you noticed in there, I like how it said that she was opening up her community participation. Mm -hmm. And but I'd like to know where the community participation is in the district, because what she served on, Board of Directors of the Omaha Performing Arts. I saw that too. American Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. um, the Women's Ball Committee, Exarban's Women's Ball Committee. Alpha sorority, the yeah. Omaha chapter league. So you tell me where you got the community and no real estate. Oh, I did forget. They do live in the big house on the hill off of Lake Street and she's vice president of the neighborhood association. Mm -hmm. So I noticed all that. And I also see that she's already a member of the Omaha Municipal Land Bank Community Relations Advisory Committee. That was the thing that stuck out to me is like, why are we going to put her on this board when she's already on an advisory committee? Did that, does that mean anything to anybody? I don't know. Well, the advisory committee 
And this is really, if she was on there, she's not been at a meeting. Mm, yeah, it says she's- Because <laughs> I go to the monthly meetings. Uh-huh. And then also they just started the ambassador program. Mm -hmm. She's not on that. Hmm. So if she was on this advisory committee, what, wh where is the advisory committee? Who else is on the advisory committee? Right. So that's what I was thinking too. Like, what is, I haven't really heard much about mm -mm. that. Really, don't exist. Relations advisory committee. Yeah. So that was something else I kind of was like. And to throw in a little tidbit, it seems awful familiar, awful suspicious. When we started watching the video that Joe Jordan mm -hmm. asked the questions because the six month is coming up and it is six months. Yeah. Um, that is in the statute. Mm -hmm. And I did submit my application on the night. Mm -hmm. So I submitted mine, Miss Brown submitted hers, mm -hmm. and we just definitely have community involvement as well as real estate background. Yeah. But we don't get it. Because as you brought out, and I want to thank you for that, Sarah, because I'm probably going to make that in my part of my speech. Please. Why is it that there's only yeah. five black folks that can be recommended by the mayor? Yeah, I don't get it. I don't either. I do. She's well, I won't. Even oh, say yes. About her, but we know. Yeah. So that is. Um, and so for those of you that I feel like we know what's going on, but this is. Um, so Ben Gray was it uh, a couple months ago. Ben Gray so, was appointed to the Land Bank District 2, and there was a- By the mayor, because again, these are all yeah. mayoral appointments. But it was one of the few appointments that I can re recall that did not pass. Yeah. Um, and I, it was, I believe, Cheryl Weston, it was in part a lot to what you said and what you Absolutely. brought up. Yeah. Um, and so there's been, the seat has remained vacant for five months. And mm -hmm. the mayor recently said that it is, quote, functioning properly without- mm -hmm out of uh, District 2 representative. And then combine that with, uh, is it 80 to 90% of the properties in the Omaha Correct. are in District 2. And so mm -hmm. the land bank's functioning properly without a representative for 80 to 90% of the, where the properties are located. Yeah. So sh this is gonna be item number 70 on this week's consent agenda, um, which I do think it should be taken off and spoken about separately. Yeah. Um, and same with the library board while we're on mayoral appointments. Yeah. I mean, that's so number three. 68 is Cameron Gales um, is an appointment to the library board. But Gales served, and this was from a tip from Save OPL and Cindy, uh, already has served as the assistant community relations director in Stothard's mm -hmm. office from 2013 to 2015. So again, it's just all this incestuous bullshit where it's like, oh, you've already worked with You've already slept with so and so you're married to who la, la, la. like why can we not get fresh faces and fresh blood on these mayoral appointments and then also once we have these committees they have no teeth because they're all yes men for the mayor uh cindy maxwell osdeck your hands up tell us what you're thinking okay can i ask a question please Always. because i went to the last library meeting and asked why it was still open yeah because i had called the mayor's office and they did finally repost it but this has been open for like five or six months. If so, this person is someone they knew, yeah, because they worked together five, five however many years ago. Yeah. How do we find out? Okay, the recruiter part of me, I'm curious who all applied and when. Right, is that public? Can I find yes. out? It is Cheryl. where Cheryl tell us? I don't know. It is public record. Um, you can ask the city um, attorney's office because if you notice, they has to be signed off on the city on the oath. Mm -hmm. It has to be notarized, and then the city attorney who signs off on all of the uh, recommendations, and it'll usually be Taylor or one of the assistant at other attorneys. But you can request that, um, which is how I get most of mine. Is um, I remind them that it is a FOIA. Mm -hmm. You can ask that it be um, the applications and all forms that were submitted for that particular position, you would like to have a copy of because it's per public record. And is that Taylor person, is that a woman? No, I mean, okay. yes, yes, it is a woman. I think I met her tonight and I'm not sure. <laughs> if you met her, I don't think you would forget. She wears her hair real short let you know that she is Taylor. She is the city assistant city attorney. Jennifer mm -hmm. Taylor. 
Oh, yeah, I met. Hair. I yeah. think I met someone different after the short meeting. Hair, short blonde hair. Yeah. Well, maybe it wasn't that when you met her, but it could have been Michelle Peters. Could have been who you met. Okay, there was a person. Also, that, yeah, tiny with dark hair. So uh, the one of the library board members caught me as she was leaving, and because I'd asked this question, and she said, you know, because <laughs> they were meeting somebody. And so then I add a question about the request for proposal that is going to be distributed or put out um, for bid on Monday and couldn't get it. My question asked during the meeting and they kept saying, ask the board and then they'll send it to the city. And I'm like, well, that's not going to happen in time. So this board member showed me where to go talk to this attorney for the city. And it was not someone with short hair. But I was talking with her about my question for the request for proposal, and I don't think she liked it. <laughs> so I, don't, I was like, if that's the same person, that's not going to be great. But um, the, I, I have information that I would love to ask about the request for proposal, and I do not want to derail our conversation. Can I ask it at the end? please yeah because we are going to talk about library stuff at the end because that is i mean obviously you just came from a meeting we've got yeah we will talk and about i that. really appreciate the tip about calling the attorney for the city and asking for that so i will do it thanks awesome yes yeah, see we crowdsource all this stuff cheryl you're awesome thanks for caring cindy so that's and all so of you. we have the yeah. library appointment cameron gales we have charlyn rogers to the land mm -hmm. and then number 69 kyla janda to Parks and Recreation Board. So three appointments, um, all on the consent agenda. Ugh, yeah, hopefully they get spoken or talked about. Most of the times the consent agenda, um, maybe, I would say half the time the consent agenda goes through with zero discussion. So. Uh, ask for them to pull the way it to get that moved from consent agenda, and I don't mean to keep butting in, but I, I you know, if you want to know how to do it is um, whoever that, um, district any or let me back up any of the south city council members at pre-conference yeah. can ask to have this item moved from the consent agenda to a public speaking or public meeting and so whichever one you want to send this to your request send a request to them um asking for um this to be a consent to be to moved from the consent agenda. Not only do they talk about it, but then they have to vote on it separately. Because yeah. otherwise, you know, 40 items will all get ignored yes. and then voted on in one giant block. So they'll- But you correct. speak about them even because it's like, that, that's, yeah, the public hearings for 34 through 71 are, are on Tuesday. So you can get up there and speak about it, but hopefully they'll pull it off so that they can all talk about it too. Yeah, it's- it's weird. I don't know. I wish. They don't usually, though, Sarah, do they usually, if it doesn't get pulled off in the pre pre conference, do they usually allow it to be pulled off at the regular meeting? I yes, think, it, yes. Yeah. It's possible. Okay. Yeah. I've, I, I've seen that happen a couple times where someone will make a motion to remove it from there during the meeting. So, yeah. From the public or from the city council members? The city council member will ask for it during the meeting. Okay, but so that's the reason why I said you need to get it to some city council member beforehand. Yeah, beforehand, whether they do it at pre-conference or there, somewhere yeah. it yeah. has to be a city council member is the yeah. only one that can pull it. Yeah, totally. Um, I saw a little message from uh, David about item twenty-seven. SROs. Yeah. And that was, that had public hearing, which there wasn't any, oh no, there was, wasn't it Larry? Larry stood up and was wondering if the police and schools are there to enforce <laughs> the laws of Omaha or the school boards will. And I was just like, oh, old ass Larry, get out of here. Anyway, what do you think, Dave? Oh uh, yeah, just real quick. Uh, I just dropped a link to it in the chat, but uh, Cedar Rapids um, this last year decided that they wanted to try and arrest less students. Oh, and nice. they magically were able to and divert them instead of taking them to jail. Yeah, um, yeah just like it, it started because they noticed the racial disparity was really off, like who would have sunk it. Um, okay. And then, uh, yeah, the, the 
they went from like basically going like like 28 students in a year to one. So, I mean, I, I know they're not going to make any changes, but I was looking through on the agenda item, like some of the changes they made to it were like uh, SROs not enforcing school rules and things like that. Um, so when they stop doing things like that, uh, they arrest less people. So I just thought that was interesting. I'll probably just yeah. mail or email that article to them, but yeah. I'm not really expecting anything. No, I yeah. just saw there, uh, where were, there was a school shooting for the, the last um, all the time. Yeah, the most re one of the more recent school shootings. Um, they had an SRO there, and in, in addition to that, they had actually done extensive, oh geez, not live shoot, uh, training at the schools, um, drills probably. I and so this school was specifically prepared for a shooting and they and I think four kids ended up still dying they said that more kids would have died if they didn't have it but there was finally some talk of what if we stop terrorizing the kids with these live shooter drills mm. and instead invest money into um because the kid had a mental was yeah, had a mental, mental breakdown health. yes and they were just like maybe we shouldn't be giving all the money to the police and we should try and do other community just resources anything, that actually yeah. help people instead of just punish them for no. I'll care. see if I can find that article and send it to you, David, because I was like, finally, like, because man, those those school tr uh, shooter drills. I've heard from people how kids are terrorized. They it yeah. ends up they get, Traumatized they get PTSD. Kids, yeah. Like, I don't want to be here on the day of the live shooting drill. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I, I would. Yeah, uh, I went to a <laughs> I went to like a farm town high school. So like cops in schools and shootings and stuff just totally not my experience and unfortunately i feel like omaha just does not have the will right now to do anything but give all the police all the money they want um without question so and then once the police retire they get rehired and then they oh, serve geez. in the mayor's office yeah. and then anyway okay we won't keep going down <laughs> that but thank you very much for sharing that article i'm excited to read it and yeah Funny what happens when you take police out of school, less kids get arrested. Go figure. So you um, moving, looking at item number 55, back on the agenda, mm -hmm. a street renaming, 24th to 27th Street, Caldwell. Uh, you said it's from Lillian Clemens? Cobbin Street. And she was killed in Iraq? Yep. yep Interesting. So doing, uh, That's wild. They waited that. 2007. That was a bit ago. Yeah. But do you do anything else about that? Nope. I just huh put it on there and they renamed roads. I just think it's interesting. And I wanted to know who that person was. Yep. So she was um, served and killed in Iraq. So, and then item number 59, 60, 61, 64 is all money for parks. Quite a bit of money. Um, 41,000 for a basketball cart at Applewood Heights, 153,000 for a golf shed. That one was interesting because in the in the bid of the attachment for the golf shed it says quote the best bid was accepted not the lowest and for those of you that follow along specifically with palermo always pointing out that the we always go with lowest is best this is when he was talking about uh, nebraska land recycling which is not the best recycler in omaha um but sarah you said that you found in the attachment that yeah, i was going to try to find that they they didn't fill out their form correctly. I think that is what it was. And it was I feel like I can else, already though. hear Palermo getting ready to go on how they didn't meet bid specification requirements. So they but might I, not have submitted all of it, or I don't know what the technicality was, but but somehow. it says best bid, not lowest. Usually it'll say lowest bid. Basically, if you if you get the lowest bid, you get the contract. No questions asked. Pretty much. But like last week, they didn't accept a bid for paint because the previous lowest bid gave them shit paint it was clumpy like literally it said the paint was clumpy they had to give it back um and so it's just interesting when we see not the lowest bid was accepted but the best bid was accepted i'm i guarantee palermo is gonna like we're gonna get a so is it thirty thousand different dollar difference yeah yep like yeah or twenty three thousand um okay. so yeah uh hundred sixty one thousand for westchester playground and then thirty one thousand for for park benches and I was trying to see, we also get the little park, the little placards. I was trying to see if they've already, they have, they don't have, I was hoping it'd be an attachment. Who's going to get the placards? Mm, very exciting. Yeah. But also um, an interesting, so I looked at the park bench design. They are not, um, you could sleep on them. 
if you wanted to take a nap or whatever, they're, they're not those type of benches that have like the anti-homeless. Yeah. Um, thankfully, they're just regular benches that if you want to lay down on. Um, so at least we're getting good benches. Yeah, benches for parks. I don't know what all parks. Um, did you see if they're going all over the place or where no, they are? I think it did not have. Yeah, I didn't see. Because the other, I mean, and I always just like to point out East Omaha and West Omaha discrepancies. And so the rest of that money is pretty much for, aside from the the golf cart shed, which is at Elmwood, which is kind of midtown, um, the other ones are like West O parks. 108th, but, 139th. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, good for parks. I like it. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, moving along. Um, the African American Empowerment Network is going to have um, a step up program. Well, they already have a step up program, but it's funding for that um, $500,000, which is good. Um, and then the appointments we talked about. So Cameron Gales to the library board, Kyla Janda, which does anybody know who that person is to the Parks and Rec board? And then Charlene Rogers, which we talked about. Um, but I guess, I don't know, I just keep getting bummed as far as like, mayoral appointments to boards that are worthless because they're all mayoral appointments and they all just do whatever she says anyway so there's oh no yeah we, we um we breezed over so this last uh the human rights and relations and relations did we talk and about then that? the civil at the very at the beginning a little bit okay. but we could talk about it more and um cheryl was there and spoke about it and made some good points but i think yeah they're what we were talking about was they are trying to come up with now just a three-person civil rights hearing board this is a board that has been defunct, not operational for over 20 years. And we're just now getting with the picture because HUD's about to pull funding since we're so out of whack with this. Um, so that, I guess that'll probably get voted on and it'll be a thing. Um, part of me thinks it's better than nothing if this hasn't been around forever. But again, as long as it's mayoral appointments and it's just more of whatever she wants, there's no teeth to it anyway. But I guess we'll see. Cheryl, did you have any other thoughts that you wanted to add on that civil rights? There were three, board? three items I thought, right? With human rights relations. There was a bunch last week with Dr. There, there's more to the story than what was told. And that was one of the points. If you notice, he originally said that it had been 20 years, mm -hmm. but then he, after it's, if you notice later on, he said two years. Someone missed um, that. They had two boards yeah. and the one hadn't been really active for 20 years, and this was supposed to be one, but that's not really true. And from what I was told, part of it, um, the OHA assumedly had put in a case or complaint on this particular board that wasn't active, should have heard it, and it went to the other board. And of course, nothing got done. And that's when that went to HUD. Mm. That's what brought the attention to. And then you noticed he said, well, we really need to have it. I think Juanita said, asked, you know, is there a deadline HUD gave you? And not really. We just wanted to try to have this done by the January review. So that tells me right there, that sends a flag. Now we're not getting the whole story on this. There's more to it. And then the wording, um, and I haven't printed off the wording to see if there was any changes at all because um, I wanted, I have a call in to the guy, the tall guy, uh, Reginald or whatever his name is. He stopped by at the meeting and, oh, I'd like to explain to you and all that. So I'm like, hey, give it on. <laughs> he, I've emailed him before. He never returned my email. So I hope you have better. Yeah. I, I think I will. <laughs> well, I'm sure you will. will you let us know how that but goes. There, there's more to that story. Yeah. And hopefully if um, we can get, it would be great if I could get some response back from HUD mm -hmm. as uh, what can be done. Yeah. Interesting. Well, yeah, keep us posted if we can obviously help holler, let us know, but that, that'll be interesting to see what ends up happening with that. Yeah, seems fishy as per usual. Huh, okay. Well, uh, what's that old saying say? If it quacks, if it walks like a duck, looks like a duck, it's a duck. So yeah, it's yeah, fishy. It's a duck. All right, I agree. Uh, another lawsuit um, we are paying out due to, I think a crash it seemed like, I don't know why you said opioid lawsuit. There's two. 
Oh. The, 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 the settlement. So number 71 is something to do with an opioid settlement. Hmm. I somehow um, skipped that one. Yeah, I didn't I didn't even click on the attachment. Class action lawsuit. They're they're joining they're give we're joining like the class action lawsuit for against the drug makers. Oh, okay. Well, wow. yeah. Sacklers, hmm. I think is the big one. Interesting. Yeah. So that's number 71. And then number where's the, the settlement? This one, number, oh, number 74. 74. Um an ambulance crashed into a car. A car. With a person in it, mm -hmm. um, and we're giving them forty nine thousand. That seems it's pretty. That one wasn't as bad as the police. Yeah, that's giving, what, yeah, it's yeah, not the same. Okay. Thank you. But it's just yeah, about, yeah. Just putting it on there. Uh, <gasps> number seventy five is one point four eight million for in TIF for the Highlander Phase Four, thirtieth and Burdette. Um, wow, thirty two million dollars total project. Yeah, that's it's a big, big one. one. Yep, Highlander's just been yeah going to town over there more and more projects so this will be for 108 residential units um so more development there and then last one on our list is 76 15 million dollars for uh, the city is selling the parking garage at 15th and capital to first national bank um yeah i know sarah did you, did you see how they're paying us I, I couldn't figure it out. It's like eight they're, million, and they're paying us. They're paying us half in money, and the other half is in land. It's directly east of Creighton University's Morrison Stadium. Yeah, First I saw that list of all those properties. So that parking yeah. lot is eight million. The small one, a pair. It's like seven and a half million. Uh, but we need to. We need to say. Right now, okay, so the plan is on the books. You, we know that the city is acquiring this property right now. So begin outreach now for what is the best use of this property. But, you know, of course, the plans are already made, but um, that's that's what you know. You know, we're the city is acquiring more property as we're just in the we're wheeling and dealing and in, in the real estate development business. Yeah, and that's a great segue to the library shit that's going on. And I don't know how much of that we want to talk about before we hit stop or if we want to talk about that more after we hit stop recording but yeah it's just wild to me that the city is just like wheeling and dealing with real estate and that's how we're I so guess we're, we're selling normal. is it us i don't know how many stories that parking garage at 15th and capital it's i would say five stories i know it's almost 700 stalls so we're selling that for eight million and then first national bank is giving us a parking lot with maybe a hundred stalls also worth eight million like and then i'm also thinking about the parking lot that we just paid 30 million for at unmc it just something doesn't seem right <laughs> it's a duck it yeah quacks like it a duck. quacks like a duck yeah. so that was the end of our notes i know cindy <sighs> are, also had us um something are we should... still are we still on recording we are but if anybody else uh does anybody else have anything they want to say while we're recording or should i just <laughs> hit stop and then we can talk more about whatever we want Okay, I'm gonna mark. I'm yeah. gonna hit stop recording and then we'll uh, talk about the good stuff.